I'm looking at this race, and for those that don't know, uh, recently uh, Ryan Grimm reported at The Intercept that essentially Chantel Brown, who is her chief opponent, uh, she's like the, ch the chairwoman of the Cuyahoga County uh, City Council. Uh, this district in Ohio is the 11th district. It uh, encompasses Cleveland and Akron. Um, so Chantel Brown has been sending out, well, excuse me, the Democratic Party, the Democratic Majority for Israel, a super PAC that went hard after Bernie before the Iowa caucus. And suddenly, apparently, there's major uh, ramifications for Israel in Cleveland and Akron. <laughs> now they are uh, on the air. They've already spent nearly $500,000. They've already spent nearly $500,000 uh, in negative ads against Nina Turner. Uh, and, you know, politics is politics. You expect lies and distortions. But these are like a whole different level, Jen. I mean, they're saying she's against universal health care when she's literally running ads for Medicare for all. They're saying she's against raising the minimum wage when there's like countless videos of her fighting for a $15 minimum wage. So they're just like blatantly, blatantly lying and cynically hoping, you know, just regular voters who aren't as plugged in to, you know, us, plugged in like us, are going to get spooked by it and think like, oh, this Nina Turner is full of it and is against things for us. Um, and some of the ads that I've seen are even kind of subtly trying to paint Nina as somehow like complicit in electing Donald Trump or emboldening Donald Trump. Uh, one of the ads that ran starts out with images of like the insurrectionists from January 6th. Um, so and they point out that, you know, Nina uh, said voting for Biden between Trump, Trump uh, was, you know, like uh, choosing, you know, between a bowl of shit or something like that. I, I'm paraphrasing. So essentially, it, it's pretty much the playbook Hillary Clinton won and Joe Biden run. Like sh this, this Chantel Brown doesn't exactly have any accomplishments to run on, per se. So they're just trying to make um, Nina Turner not a loyal Democrat and basically lie to voters and fear uh, spook voters. Uh, but frankly, it's effective. Uh, the polls have tightened uh, between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown. Uh, this after Hillary Clinton endorsed her. This after uh, the you know establishment machete James Clyburn endorsed her. Uh, James Clyburn is now going to campaign with Chantel Brown this weekend. So again, you know, I just to make a point, this isn't me saying this is like a Nina bro, but for all those who were calling Nina Turner a sellout and a fraud because she wasn't ranting against the Democratic Party uh, in the in, in the interview we did or she's not ranting against Biden and the Democratic Party on the campaign trail enough for your liking. Why do you think James Clyburn is going into Ohio this weekend? Why do you think the Democratic majority for Israel is so interested in this race. Why do you think Hillary Clinton endorsed in this race other than, you know, her obsessive hatred for Bernie Sanders and all things uh, the Bernie movement? Why do you think, frankly, my gut, you're going to see other endorsements coming in uh, even bigger than Clyburn. My money's on Obama getting involved in this race and endorsing Nina Turner's opponent. Do you think maybe because they might feel, oh, no, this is not going to be like AOC? This is not going to be like, you know, Pramila Jayapal w when she gets elected, that maybe this person might actually be a threat. Maybe this person might actually play hardball. Just a thought. Uh, but the news today, Jen, is uh, Turner, Nita Turner's campaign announced AOC is coming to campaign, not this weekend, next weekend. Um, I'm hearing that other uh, progressives will be campaigning there as well um, towards the towards the actual election, a little after AOC comes. Um, I feel a little bittersweet about this because, you know, regardless of our thoughts on AOC, and we've been very critical of her, you know, it can't hurt, that's for sure. It certainly can't hurt, Jen, to have AOC come campaign for you. Uh, yeah, among Black. Sorry? I said it's an absolutely wonderful, great move for her campaign to have AOC come. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other end, and I'd love your thoughts, to me, I kind of see, kind of see similar mistakes being made by Nina Turner's campaign that Bernie Sanders made, obviously on a different level. 
because uh, one's national and one's in a district. You know, I agree uh, politically, taking off my reporter hat and just like strategy wise, I think she's smart not to attack the Democratic Party, attack Biden. Again, I've gone through the numbers for the audience before, but this is a district that the Cleveland area went like by 30 points, 30 percent for Biden in the presidential election. Akron went 10 points to Biden over Trump. Uh, in the in the congressional race, Marsha Fudge, who was the congresswoman here and now is uh, housing and urban development secretary. So that's why this seat is open. Uh, she won by 60 points, 60 points in uh, the 2020 congressional race. So this is a this is a vote blue no matter who district. Whoever wins the primary is going to win the seat because Republicans not going to win here. And this is not an electorate. This is not a YouTube electorate. They don't hate the Democratic Party like you and I do. Uh, they don't, you know, think they like, the, you know, they like President Obama, you know, those kind of things. But on, on issue by issue, they are more with Nina Turner than Chantel Brown. So I do think uh, they're running a smart campaign as far as not, go, not going on the attack. But I think they are being way too passive with this all out assault uh, that's going on right now between the ad saying she's not for universal health care, the ad saying she's not for uh, raising the minimum wage, the ads that are subtly painting her as like a Trump, uh, you know, somebody who got Trump in. Um, I think they're being way too passive in their response. And frankly, as I want, as I desperately wanted Bernie to do, where is the where is the right hand to her campaign? Where is the attacks from Nina Turner's campaign on Chantel Brown? This whole idea, well, we're just going to run on the issues. We're just going to run, you know, a positive campaign. That's nice. That generally does not work in politics. Uh, you have to have some of that and some of your vision, but you also have to know how to throw a punch. I don't see them defending themselves very strongly, and I don't see them throwing a punch uh, that strongly, Jen. Yeah, so um, it's hard for me to pick like point by point when you become monologue McGee, but I'll do my best. Are you saying I talk to him? <laughs> Something, maybe, maybe I'm hinting at that. No, I, I think, uh, I, you know, Nina, Nina is, this is a, a complicated like political um, race. And it's not complicated in that, you know, Nina has to do certain things to win in her district. It's complicated, I think, for the online left to wrap its mind around because um, for, for the online left, it's like you're either a fire breather 100% of the time or you are a fraud and a sellout. Um, but the reality is, the on the ground reality is, just as you said, Jordan, that her, her district is a certain way and votes a certain way. When you do break down the issues, as is true across the board for for Democrats and left -leaning, like self-described left-leaning people, Bernie-style, Nina-style policies are exceptionally popular. So they agree with her on those things, but there's a real opportunity for the Chantel Brown crowd to smear her as, you know, uh, in the way that that these folks do for someone like Susan Sarandon, like, oh, you helped elect Donald Trump, it's your fault. So it's easy for them to do that. So what Nina Turner has to do campaign wise is different than what, you know, she would do if she were running for like president of the Twitter extremely online left crowd. Jen, so you know, you know people are gonna get triggered by this language. That's okay, I speak my truth. Um, <laughs> so I, I think, I, I think that's a complicated issue, but I think that she's doing a good job of staying focused on that and not getting lost in kind of like, oh, what's going on in, in this online space is, uh, the most meaningful thing. What's most meaningful for her and her words are those folks of the doors that she knocks on who need health care. So that's what she's focusing on. As far as her not like fighting back against the Chantel Browns of the world, um, well, not of the world, like against Chantel Brown and against these establishment figures who are boosting Chantel. Um, yeah, I think you do have a good point there. 
but strategically, I don't know at this point how hard I think she should go. I know that you have um, a different sort of view, like you think, you know, obviously, well, we both agree that Bernie should have gone much harder um, and fought more against Biden. But as far as what is good, like Nina Turner's ahead in her district, right? But how much wiggle room would she have and how much risk would she have to kind of fall if a so-called attack went the wrong way? 